Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Ellen here with a new video for you. Welcome to the sixth part of What If Deku Had the Rinnegan. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So, we begin. The truth of the matter was that, when they weren't busy knocking each other into walls or learning how to best use their quirks, UA was just an average school. And that was weird, but fun. Getting to be taught all of these average school subjects such as calculus and English by pro heroes was an experience Izuku was not expecting to enjoy as much. And he wasn't expecting them to be so good as teachers either. For example, Midnight was always flirty and a bit promiscuous, but there was an energy to her, an excitement that came when she was talking about something she clearly cared about that made the woman feel like a completely different person. But that didn't mean it wasn't, to some degree, still intimidating. For example, Midoriya was pretty sure Aizawa-sensei relished in the deep fear he'd the power of instilling into each and every last one of their hearts. But it's not until he walks into class, the same dead eyes on his face as usual, and announces in a deadpan that they have something very important to do today. That Izuku realizes just how much because everyone remembers his last test, and everyone panics, and then Aizawa goes, without missing a beat, electing our class representative. And he enjoyed the panic. Izuku saw it in his eyes. Aizawa had known exactly what he was doing. And then his brain caught up with his words. That's... wow. That's... so normal. And it was also something a bit terrifying. So while his class suddenly and aggressively erupted into wild cheers and avid discussion, Izuku sank deeper into his spot, sighing to himself as he looked around. In truth, he couldn't say he didn't want to become a class rep. As a hero in training, that sort of responsibility would make for both good training and good recognition. But the truth was that the boy with the emerald locks didn't quite believe himself up to snuff. He was powerful, yes, and he knew for a fact he was intelligent. Socially capable? Those were words nobody had likely ever used to describe him in the history of the world. Ever. Everyone quiet! Ida bellowed, slamming a hand on his table, and Izuku almost jumped. The boy sounded intense. This is a task laden with responsibilities, and we must treat it accordingly. Desiring to be the class president alone does not qualify you for the position. He had the class's full attention now, eyes narrowed, and a grave expression on his face of firm features, casting some shadows on the left side of his face as he spoke clearly. Which is why we must decide it by vote. A worthy leader will be elected democratically! Izuku supposed his logic was sound, but he'd made it sound rather dramatic, hadn't he? The boy with the concentrical eyes sweat dropped a bit. Uh, w won't everyone just vote for themselves? The way Tenya spun around to meet his gaze was fast enough to give Izuku whiplash, and the boy unconsciously flinched at the motion. But then, Ida nodded. Indeed, Midoriya! His voice sounded sharp. Which is precisely why whoever manages to accumulate more votes will prove themselves deserving of the position. Ah, uh, he mumbled, furrowing his eyebrows. Well, I suppose that would work. Recalling how Ida took command of the classroom, Izuku pondered. yayuroso san had proved herself quite capable. But so had Itakun. It was a question of intelligence versus diligence, and, in Izuku's opinion, the latter won out. Between the two of them, he knew who he was voting for. Itakun and Yaya Rosasan would make for great class rep and vice reps, whatever order that came in. Izuku felt confident in that. And then, Midoriya Izuku, two votes. Choose your vice president or vice presidents between yourselves. I don't care. Aizawa sounded about as dead inside as ever, and then his words registered. Staring blankly at the blackboard, Izuku blinked slowly, owlishly, rubbed at his eyes to make sure he was seeing what was really there. Yep, no change. As usual, his Rinnegan afforded him perfect sight. Eh? He mumbled. Uh, uh, I see, Ida spoke to himself, slowly at first, and then louder and more enthusiastic as he went on. Well then? Eh? The food here is so good! Uraraka hummed in clear contentment, shoveling down rice like she was starving with a wide smile on her face. And they've got all kinds, too! But Izuku wasn't thinking about that at all. 
I made class rep, he mumbled to himself. Why did I make class rep? A pause. Uraraka-san blinked. Aren't you happy about it? She questioned, perhaps naively. N no, I am. It's just... He swallowed dryly. I'm not sure I'm up to the task? Nonsense, Ida immediately cut in. You have more than proven both your wit and your leadership, which is why you were elected. Despite his nervousness, Izuku couldn't help but feel a swirl of joy in his chest at his friend's reassurance. It was perhaps a bit ironic that he would only find himself receiving positive reinforcement after losing most of his crippling insecurity. Still, these particular worries were founded. I, uh, thanks. It's just that I don't really have any experience with this, and I'm not too good with people. Ida shook his head. You will do wonderfully, he repeated. My faith in your abilities is why I myself voted for you. And as one of your vice presidents, I shall do my best to aid you in your duties. Yeah, about that. Is it really fine to have two vice presidents? Uraraka chimed in, eyebrows furrowed in something akin to confusion. I'm pretty sure the rest of the classes will only have one. W well a pause. I guess so. Aizawa was talking about how UA let the teachers choose how to teach, and I guess this is included. But really, I think he just wanted to wrap things up as soon as he could. Yeah, that does sound like him, doesn't it? The girl chuckled. <laughs> Still, I'm surprised you voted for him, Ida. You talk all proper and all, and you really looked like you wanted to be the president. You even got the look down with the glasses and all. Wow, Izuku thought. She's blunt. Well, it is true that I desired the position, but I am satisfied with vice presidency. I followed my better judgment as I believed I should. I am surprised I got any votes at all. I am thankful for your faith in myself, Midoriya. Knowing you, it must have been a pain to speak up in class, but you still went out of your way to present me as vice president. Y yeah Honestly, it had been beyond nerve-wracking. Choosing class rep had been hell enough on its own, but when no vice presidents were elected by vote, the class dissolved into another pandemonium. In the end, they'd settled for Ida and Yayorozu, because they hadn't yet made a decision by the time Aizawa got tired of it, announced they were both vice presidents, and left. And then a loud, loud sound came in, like a thousand wailing sirens. The three all froze, eyes widening. Security level three has been breached, the voice recording in the school audio systems announced. Students are required to evacuate. What is security level three? Ida questioned. It means someone's infiltrated school grounds. This hasn't happened in three years, an upperclassman responded. Another pandemonium began. Students began to jump off their seats and scramble desperately towards the exits, pushing and knocking each other over in their desperate break for the exit. Acting on instinct, Izuku grabbed both Ida and Uraraka by the wrists, pulling them toward the back and the windows to avoid the front of the growing mob. Unfortunately, there was only so much he could do against the endless onslaught of people. The three of them didn't last long in the clear before someone was pushed into them, and then someone else into them, and before they knew it, the trio had their faces pressed against the glass and people pressed against their backs. And through the window, they could see... The press! Ida mumbled. He was right. There was a veritable sea of reporters gathered by the front gate, pushing microphones and other equipment into the faces of the heroes trying to keep them away. A false alarm, his brain supplied, and Izuku was about to say as much, until he froze. The Rinnegan supplied him with perfect vision. Every detail and shape was carefully cataloged in his brain. One of the less pronounced abilities of his eyes, and one he'd taken long to notice, but a skill nonetheless. And there was something off. Part of the school gates, not the ones where the media gathered, not quite, but a bit to the side, were... Melted? No, not quite. They just looked weird, like there was part of them missing. But due to the angle, he couldn't be sure. If only he could get a better look. But he couldn't see any reporters inside. What? Ah, damn it. This was not the time. Everyone calm down! It's just the press! Ida tried to scream. Unfortunately, with his face pressed against glass and 500 people screaming at the same time as him, it came out rather feeble. Damn it. This crowd was starting to get dangerous. Someone could get trampled. Damn it, Izuku thought, forcing himself to turn even though people were pressing into him. He inhaled, channeled chakra through his eyes, and pointed outwards with his palms. He had to calm the situation. 
which meant getting these people away for just one second. Controlling the force output of his diva path was difficult, but doable. In the end, the hardest thing was convincing himself it was fine to use the Rinnegan to push all of the 20 people pressing Ida, Uraraka, and himself into the window. But it was the right thing to do, so he did it. With a slight thrumming, the crowd was rather forcefully pushed back, though not nearly enough to cause real harm. Still, now having cleared a two-feet area around himself, Ida, and Uraraka, the boy turned his purple eyes to Ida, who met his gaze and nodded. <laughs> The sound of Uraraka slapping Ida's back as he jumped, floating just over their heads. Everyone! Ida bellowed, voice fierce, and this time everyone heard him. Everything is fine! It is only the press! He held everyone's gazes now, shock and surprise and confusion alike. But they'd stopped rushing and squirming. That was good enough on its own. We are students of UA and must conduct ourselves accordingly! And that was how Ida Tenya saved the day. Not much after, the three of them approached the gates after classes were done. The sunset's warmth already began to color the skies around them, but the surroundings were mostly empty as students were beginning to walk back to class. But Izuku pulled his friends aside for a moment and asked them to follow. Midoriya, Ida began, eyebrows furrowed. I understand your concern about the event from earlier, but I believe this is rather rash. We cannot afford to be late just because... Come on, Ida-kun, Uvaraka cut in, chipper as always. It's like we're detectives! She turned back to look at her green-haired friend, intent on smiling at him, but found him with a vacant expression in his eyes. Izuku remained silent, staring ahead with the fabled eyes of the Renegon, looking conflicted and concerned. Ida stepped closer to him. Midoriya-san, is everything... And then Ida saw it. On one of the gates, more to the side and near a corner... A section of the very gates themselves had been rusted away, rotted into a pile of metal dust that sat now between blades of grass. A gaping hole into UA, eaten away at the very gates themselves. Openly so. Itakun, Izuku mumbled. What are the odds some reporters did this? They all knew the answer. Something was afoot. Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertaining and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day.